One of the more underrated SpongeBob Season 1 episodes is Culture Shock, an episode all about Squidward organizing a talent show at the Krusty Krab. Near the end of this episode, after loads of terrible acts and performances, it is finally Squidward's turn to perform, and he entertains us with some iconic dance moves. Now, since this episode, Squidward has referenced his groovy moves a few times, but the most notable reference, in my opinion, was in the episode Pat Hart Squid, as when Squidward tries dancing to attract people, at one point, his moves are precisely what he does in Culture Shock, and guess what? In response, the audience throws tomatoes at him, just like they did in that episode. Poor Squidward. Here's a clip. I will now bedazzle your dazzlers with interpretive dance! <laughs> <laughs> Our first easter egg can be found in the episode Gary in Spot, and it references a classic episode from Season 2, that being the episode Dumped. In this episode, Spongebob gets his little heart broken, when his pet snail, Gary, wants to spend more time with Patrick than himself. So, to try and make little Gary jealous, Spongebob gets a new pet snail, named Larry, who is not only a lot uglier, but a lot meaner too, like this snail just sucks. At one point, Spongebob lets him sleep in his own bed and he just ruins his bed. Now since the episode dumped, Larry has pretty much disappeared from the series, but he did pop up recently in the form of an easter egg, as when Gary frees all of the creatures from the animal shelter in the episode Gary and Spot, Larry is one of them thus making for a fun little callback to the show's second season. One of my favorite seasons. Here's a clip with audio. Come on, let me show you around. Larry, Larry, I present to you dinner time. Ta-da! Bon appetit, Larry. <laughs> One of the more iconic characters in Spongebob history is Squilliam Fancy Son, a rude, arrogant, and disrespectful squid who is Squidward's longtime rival since high school. He made numerous appearances in the show's first few seasons, always teasing or bullying Squidward. But since season 4, his appearances have become very limited, like we rarely see this snobby squid anymore. Well, in the Season 10 episode, The Checkup, he finally makes his return to the series, in the form of an easter egg, as he's in one of the many photos framed on the X-Ray photo booth. Hopefully he can make a physical appearance soon, maybe in Season 13 or 14, that'd be pretty cool. But for now, this was an awesome little cameo. What are you doing here? <coughs> I just wanted to watch you blow it. So, where's your band? Uh... They couldn't come, they died. Then who's that? Ah, that would be my band! Oh, shrimp! It's my arch rival from high school, Squilliam Fancy Son! I can't let him see me in my Krusty Krab uniform. On your lunch break, eh, Squiddy? Yes, I, I mean, no, I mean, uh, uh, hey, what you been up to? <laughs> I am very photogenic. <laughs> Let's see. How you start this thing? Oh, here we go! Whew, it's gonna hide in here! <laughs> Another classic SpongeBob episode that I loved as a kid was Season 2's Sandy, SpongeBob, and the Worm. This episode was pretty darn epic, with SpongeBob and Sandy teaming up and going on an adventure to find the Alaskan bullworm that has been terrorizing Bikini Bottom. 
Now in the end, they succeed, and manage to lunge the thing off of a cliff. And for a while, it seemed like this would be the last we'd see of the Alaskan bullworm. That is, until the episode My Leg, as during the montage where SpongeBob is trying to purposefully damage Fred's leg, Fred sprinkles salt over his leg, then SpongeBob rings a bell, and the Alaskan bullworm slithers over to Fred. Pretty cool, huh? Here's a clip. That's not the worm. That's his tongue. This is the tongue, and the whole thing is the worm. Run for your life! <laughs> <laughs> In the iconic Season 2 episode Sailor Mouth, Spongebob and Patrick learn some new, spicy, sentence-enhancing swear words from a dumpster outside of the Krusty Krab. And though they're told by Mr. Krabs not to use these bad words, which none of you should use either, by the way, they eventually ignore the old man and get themselves into some trouble. Well, Patrick gets Spongebob into trouble when he goes to snitch on him. Before all of this happens though, we're given this iconic scene, like this scene is iconic, where Spongebob and Patrick play a board game called Eels and Escalators, a parody of the classic game Snakes and Ladders, and it makes for a really funny scene. Well, 10 seasons later, in the episode Bubble Bass's Tab, I think it's a season 12 episode, this board game, Eels and Escalators, is referenced, with it appearing on Spongebob's internal shelf of games. As you guys know, I'm a major fan of the Steven Hillenburg era of Spongebob, so I loved this little nod. Now, let's play a nice wholesome game of Eels and Escalators. Oh boy, my favorite! Come on, Gary needs a new pair of shoes! Ooh, eels! Too bad, SpongeBob, you gotta ride the eel! Darn. My turn! Hooray! Escalators! <laughs> up, up, up. You'll have to play the three deadly challenges! Oh, the three deadly challenges! <laughs> Is it a game of strife, uh, shoots and bladders? Oh, here it is! Ah! The three deadly challenges! A uh, board game. As a lot of our longtime viewers know, Season 1's Pizza Delivery is one of my favorite, all-time favorite episodes, with it being all about Spongebob and Squidward going on a little pizza delivery adventure, and doing everything they can to get this box of pizza to its destination. Now, I don't know if the Krusty Krab still serves pizza to this day, but it is possible, considering that a Krusty Krab pizza box did pop up in a recent episode as an easter egg. It's easy to miss, but in the episode Plankton Gets the Boot, a Krusty Krab pizza can be seen in Spongebob's house, when he and Plankton are watching a movie in the living room. Pretty cool, huh? Now, you probably can notice there are a bunch of other easter eggs in the shot, but I'm gonna leave you guys to find them, so leave a comment what other easter eggs are in this shot. Anyways though, here's that clip. Hi there, Krusty Krab, how can I help you? Pizza? Of course we have pizza! Squid will bring it right over! <laughs> Mr. Krab, we don't serve pizza! Many unbearable hours later. Oh my love. What a fool I've been. You've always been the only one for me. The episode Appointment TV has been covered many times on this channel, and that is due to it being full of Easter eggs. Like seriously, there is a good 5 to 10 Easter eggs in this episode. But today, we're just going to focus on one. Back in the Season 3 episode, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5, Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy, and Mermaid Man dress up as the IJSLA, and Sandy dresses up as Miss Appear, and wears this costume. Well, she wears the exact same costume eight seasons later in Appointment TV, thus making for an awesome callback or easter egg. Here's a clip. 
JLSA were the most heroic heroes ever. And you had the best lunchbox, too. Once you put on these costumes, their fantastic powers will become yours. And Miss Appear! Now you see her. Now you don't. Does this outfit make me look fat? The International Justice League of Super Acquaintances, a subsidiary of Viacom. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Ah, yes! Ah. Thank you, everyone. I love the show. The season 10 episode, SpongeBob's Place, has a good plot. But I think the biggest thing this episode is known for is all of the wild Easter eggs. Now I'm not going to cover this scene, which has like 8 plus Easter eggs all in one shot, like holy cow, as we've covered it quite a few times already, but I did find another one, and it's spicy. Remember the nasty patty that Spongebob and Mr. Krabs prepared in the season 3 episode of the same name? Yeah, well, it appears again for the first time in a long time during this scene. There are some slight differences, but this was definitely a throwback to season 3, and I absolutely adore it. Here's a clip. <laughs> Why, that's the most diabolical Krabby Patty ever spawned! I call it... The nasty patty. <laughs> hey, hurry up with that patty. Here you are, sir. Enjoy. Ah, hello, delicious. I see the problem. SpongeBob's not in the kitchen. I don't know why, so but it's bad. We have seen many superheroes and supervillains throughout SpongeBob, mainly due to there being so many Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy episodes. I love them, some of my favorite episodes. A lot of them have stuck around, for example the Dirty Bubble or Man Ray, but there have been a lot that have just disappeared. One often forgotten supervillain is the evil Jumbo Shrimp, who made his first appearance in Season 1's Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 2. Since his debut, he's made a few more appearances, but they've been far and few apart. That is, until the season 11 episode, Squid Noir, as Jumbo Shrimp appears as a poster and an action figure in near mint comic books. And the suburban dad figurine throws the action figure at Mermaid Man's action figure during their fight. It's pretty cool. Here's a clip with audio. Fighting a rogue scattery of villains, like the sinister slug. The Atomic Flounder, and the dreaded Jumbo Shrimp. I'm oh, so glad you could make it. <laughs> I wouldn't miss this for the world, Dirty. <laughs> the most powerful of all crustaceans. It's Jumbo Shrimp. <laughs> Take that! And that! <laughs> Okay, so this next one could possibly be a coincidence, so let me know what your personal opinion is in the comments. We've heard Squidward jam out on his clarinet many times, and in the episode Squid Bob Tentacle Plants, we hear him play a very specific tune. Well, this song seems to be referenced two seasons later in the episode No Pat for Hat, as when Squidward plays the clarinet, he plays the exact same track he performed in Squid Bob Tentacle Pants, thus making for a possible easter egg. They might have just reused the same clarinet track, but it also could have been a reference. We don't know for sure. Good morning, Squidward! And isn't it a lovely morning? Why are you playing the clarinet on your way to work? Imbeciles think that's entertainment? Well, brace yourselves for some true entertainment! Patrick? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm fine. Okay, and last but not least, our final Easter egg, or secret, can be found in the episode Patrick's Alley, which I will admit is a bit of a cheat since it's from the Patrick Star Show and not SpongeBob, but eh, who cares? It's still really cool. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of Spongebob incidental characters, so I was pleasantly surprised when I seen Incidental 98 pop up in Patrick's Alley. This extremely rare incidental is known for his blue shirt with a heart on it, and he hasn't made an appearance since season 2. 
there aren't a whole lot of images of him, but this was definitely a really neat return of a highly requested incidental. Everyone wanted to see this guy back, so it's really cool. Back in the classic episode, Chocolate with Nuts, SpongeBob and Patrick struggle with their newly founded door-to-door -door chocolate bar business. That is, until they come across this Barnacle Chips billboard, which inspires them to be a little more business savvy. Well, it actually inspires them to start lying to people, but yeah. Well, as crazy as it sounds, this billboard has popped up quite a few times over the years as an Easter egg, with its most recent appearance being in the episode, Teacher's Pests. Don't get me wrong, this is totally a really cool Easter egg, but I do find it funny that it's just a simple billboard. Nonetheless, I love classic references like these, so I hope to see it again in the future. Now I'm going to show a clip of the Easter egg with audio, but before I do, I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching today's video. Seriously, I'm Cartoon Cory, and I'll be back again tomorrow with more SpongeBob goodness. More Easter eggs, probably, too. I'm going to do a lot of Easter egg videos this month, so make sure to subscribe. Also, if you comment on this video, I'll respond to your comment. If you're subscribed, I'll especially respond to your comment. It shows me if you're subscribed, so make sure to subscribe. Anyways, though, here's those clips with audio. Must be something to this selling game that we're just not getting. Other people do it. I mean, look at that. Eat barnacle chips. They're delicious. They are most certainly not delicious. Yet they sell millions of bags a day. Well, maybe if they didn't stretch the truth, they wouldn't sell as many. That's it, Patrick. <laughs> Would you buy this 